been a long time since I've posted an update video about anything solar. Life gets in the way, but recently, over the last few months, I've gone ahead and replaced the entire roof of this pergola I built four or five years ago with solar panels to power our entire house. It doesn't really face an ideal direction. They're actually kind of tilted towards the northwest, but this, this pergola already existed, and I thought it'd be a great way to take uh, advantage of real estate that otherwise wasn't really being used. So I got 15 uh, Canadian solar 445 watt uh, bifacial panels. Got them from Solar Steel. It was actually the place was great to deal with. Don't really don't have any complaints there. And since this wasn't originally built to have solar panels on it, I went ahead and bought quite a bit of uh, Unistrut and stitch welded it, as you can see here, on top of the existing 2x4 steel. So I did about an inch and a half of weld every foot and then alternated that on the other side by six inches. So there's plenty of places where it's connected. Uh, it seems quite rigid and strong. I don't really think it's gonna be a problem. I shortened all these connections as best as I realistically could. Uh, we've got the top six panels across here uh, in series, and then the bottom nine are in series. And the reason I did it that way is the neighbor on the back side has a tree. Let's see if you can probably see it. That uh, late in the afternoon starts putting shade on the lower panels. And so by separating the upper six, that gives us more time in the day that we can make power. Um, the total is 6.675 kilowatts and so far has created more power than our house is using. It is kind of an advantageous time of the year though. It's, you know, late summer getting into fall where, you know, we're seeing highs in the, in the upper 80s so our mini splits really aren't really having to run all that much. But all the panels are wired back to here. You see one ugly wire here that's going to get cleaned up. This last panel I put up was cracked when we received it, so haven't shortened that wire. I'm going to replace that. Comes into a little breaker panel here, the two different strings, and uh, you can see the, the pergola is grounded or bonded back to our main panel, and then conduit runs down the side of the house and into the garage, so we'll go over there and take a look at the equipment inside in just, just a second here. But as a whole, uh, this setup is making about 30 kilowatt hours a day and that's leaving me with about 10 kilowatt hours I can put into the Tesla as extra extra power to dump because our 15 kilowatt hour uh, battery bank fills up by about noon which it's right about noon right now we j discharged a bit more last night but we should be getting relatively close probably putting in about four kilowatts right now so we'll go into the garage and take a look at the equipment in there. So here in the garage, we've got the Solark 15K. Uh, it's wired through a wire trough. The power goes out to the house down here, uh, heads through a transfer switch, which we'll look at here in a bit. Battery wiring comes up along with the PV wiring. We've got our bus bars and three SOK 48-volt uh, batteries for 15 kilowatt hours. Like I said, we're currently pulling in 4.3 kilowatts and uh, we're at about 61% state of charge. This entire setup has run the whole house with plenty of excess power, like I said, for the last 10 days or so. Um, what I ended up doing was adding an EG4 charge verter because right out front we have a little tool trailer that has its own solar system in there. It's got a a Victron MultiPlus 2, uh, 48 volt, and uh, an EG4 uh, LLV2, 5 kilowatt hour battery, and 1600 watts on the roof. And it really doesn't have anything to do most of the time. So all of its extra power gets dumped through an extension cord that comes into this EG4 as soon as it reaches about 50% state of charge. It enables the second output on the MultiPlus and then dumps excess power into here. And I have the charge burger coming into the second set of battery terminals here in the uh, Solark. So that just basically charges our batteries even more from the uh, trailer, which that thing's putting out probably about 8 kilowatt hours a day with a 1600 watt array on top, which just helps supplement. Most of that goes into the Tesla 
once our batteries are full. Um, the way we accomplish that is actually through here. We've got a sub panel in the garage. It's got a 50 amp breaker that powers the uh, solar if we need to pass through extra power. But we also have two 50 amp plugs here. The one on the right is always live from the grid. So if I need to charge the car, run a welder or whatever it may be, I can always do that. The one on the left is actually connected to the Solark uh, smart load. So that comes back into here and is connected to the gen port. And that allows us to use logic to control that. So we can get up here, you can go into settings, battery setup and smart load. And so right now, as soon as our state of charge is over 70%, and we're bringing in, uh, I guess it's a random number of 580 watts, and then it'll automatically enable that plug, and that'll just start charging the car to dump excess power. So that has been keeping the car topped off with all the extra power, and uh, like I said, if I, if I need to charge a car, I can always just plug it in right there, even if our batteries are dead, because this is connected to grid input, but as a whole, uh, really, we've been, I guess you'd call it off-grid for about 10 days now since this has been running. We've had plenty of power all day and night. And I think the lowest state of charge we've hit is about 25% in the morning. And that's, you know, not conserving any power. We're running three mini splits throughout the house, big fish tank, you know, big screen TVs, all that stuff. Um, so let's go outside and I'll show how this interfaces with the actual house. Like I said, there's a 50 amp plug right over here, or I'm sorry, breaker that's bringing in grid power. Uh, right now it's not being used and we're not back feeding the grid. We don't have an agreement with our local power company. That may be something I look into here soon because we're just creating more power than I can actually use and I still have another four kilowatts of panels to put on the roof of the house. But uh, we'll go take a look at how this interfaces with the house's standard power system. So here we are on the other side of the house. I just upgraded our service to a 200 amp main service. They pulled in new conductors and put in. I put in a 200 amp panel. And then I connected that to a 100 amp critical loads panel that goes through a transfer switch here, which, you know, the bottom says generator, which is really and truly just solar power, the top being grid. We really never use that. The 200 amp panel was kind of a formality because we had put in all these mini splits throughout the house and they said basically based on load calculations, we need a 200 amp service. So I reluctantly went ahead and did that. The only breakers that are in here that really do anything is you got your 200 amp main. I used to have an electric clothes dryer. We just changed that to gas just to make it easier for our power demands. This is the garage sub panel, which feeds the uh, Solark 15K. And then if we flip the transfer switch, that's the 100 amp uh, critical loads panel, which realistically, the critical loads panel is our entire house. So the whole house is in here. This entire panel is fed through the transfer switch, which is the solar arc feeding everything. Uh, we've had absolutely no issues, it works great. We've got our emergency stop out here, got a little bit more labeling to do, but as a whole, this is where the solar arc interfaces with the grid, and currently, like I said, is not back feeding, but is certainly capable of doing so, and we'll see how much of a pain that is to deal with a local power company and make that a reality, but otherwise, it's just a quick update on the solar power stuff that's been going on at home uh, since I haven't been doing any of the RV stuff lately. And if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in a comment below.